A lot of times in relationships, we get upset about things and we want our partner to feel hurt and sad like we feel. And so what we do in retaliation is we try to punish our partner. When you're in a relationship that uses punishment as a fundamental way of communication, you can feel it. I can feel it as the therapist. And since communication and the style of communication is the most important thing that happens in a relationship, when punishment is used in your relationship, the way you feel it is through three primary areas that you really can't afford to sacrifice. The first of these is there's a loneliness between the two people. Because don't forget, punishing means that you're moving away from each other. Whereas if you're encouraging or reinforcing, you're moving towards your partner. With punishment, you're making a line. And you're actually pull it, putting up a wall or making withdrawing so that your partner can't come to me. All those bids for attention that they may be putting out, you're saying, no, you're being punished. And it doesn't matter what kind of punishment you do. I've seen people who withhold favorable things. I've seen people who use the silent treatment. The punishment style is hurtful no matter what you use. And the most important thing is that you're using it and it's tearing the relationship apart instead of bringing it together. There's also an inequality that develops within punishment because the couples are not even, because one partner, if one partner especially is using punishment, there becomes a tit for tat and the person who withdraws at that time has the power. The one who's punishing has the power and the other person is basically a person that has to decide how they're gonna react. And many times they ignore their partner. They'll say something childish, like if we're, you're gonna have a silent treatment tantrum or you're gonna start this big silent war or feud of the roses, I'm not gonna go there. And so they withdraw too. Uh, there be, there's a lack of trust and I see this all the time. The couple stop trusting each other because you never know when you're gonna be punished for being honest about something you say. And so when punishment is used, you're giving up trust within the relationship. And although I said there's three primary areas, there's one more very important one, and that's retaliation. Retaliation is when the person who, okay, there's a partner that punishes, and then the other person is the reactor, they decide to retaliate. And at that time, they may retaliate by leaving, they may retaliate by going out and doing something uh, to betray their partner. You never know, but I see it in relationships. And many times to me as a therapist, what it does, it presents as one of the partners cheated on the other one. And the reason they chose cheating was it was a retaliation against the other partner's use of punishment. So let's talk about this. What can you do if, you, if you're starting that style? What can you do to stop it in its tracks and go the opposite where you're using reinforcement instead of punishment in your relationship? First of all, you have to start a whole um, idea or concept of using kindness. Now, kindness isn't something you're born with. It's something you learn. And it's like a muscle. The more you do it, the stronger it gets. So you're going to look for little ways you, you can be kind and to each other. And it's not a fixed trait. The important thing to remember is if you decide you're gonna use kindness, the two of you together, you're gonna to look for ways to be kind to each other, you have to keep doing it. You can't be kind one day and then bitchy the next. It doesn't work like that. Kindness is something you say, let's start this program. We're gonna be kind at least three to four times to each other every day. And you're not looking for any kind of reward. You're looking for a change in the relationship dynamics, the way you communicate. Secondly, Choose the path of reinforcing. When your partner does something you like, it's very important that you tell them with your words, gosh, I really like that. Gosh, that means so much to me. 
thank you. When you start that kind of pattern, and I know it's a big deal, the two of you are gonna have to sit down together and do it together. It's very hard for one person to do this alone, especially if they're not getting any positives or anything back from their partner. Thirdly, learn to treat each other when you, when you want to punish each other. When you really do want to punish, you tell your partner, this is a time in the past I would have chosen punishment. But because I'm working this new plan with you and I really want to create something special, I'm going to choose kindness. And I'm going to tell you that I am, even though I'm angry, even though my default is to punish you, I'm going to do, I want to do something kind for you. Can you give me some ideas of what you will, what will make a difference? If your partner can't think of anything, then what you can do is you can say, I'm gonna to choose to forgive you. I'm gonna to choose to forgive you right now because I don't think you did that to hurt me, although I would like to talk about it later. When you start that kind of precedent, you're going to see a complete turnaround, a 360 in the way the two of you communicate. Number one, trust is gonna start springing back to life. You also have to take time to listen to your partner. You have to take time to admit when you mess up, because a lot of times when we punish our partner, all of the focus is on what they're doing wrong, and we're not looking at our own mess ups. When we verbalize those and say those out loud, we give our partner the ability, the opportunity to come toward us, to trust us more. And trust is the big one because a relationship cannot survive without trust and punishment basically deteriorates trust in the relationship. And I want you to take time to appreciate that, appreciate them. Do that with a hug or a touch or a kiss. Appreciate them every opportunity you have. For myself in a healthy marriage, I can tell you there are at least 20 things I can appreciate a day. If you guys are struggling, when we're in our struggling mode, if I can think of two to three things to appreciate, that's a big deal. When you start thinking of your relationship as an ongoing process, something you have to nourish and work on every day, because none of this stuff is a fixed trait, you're going to see big changes. You're going to like what you've created and what you're working on creating today.